This is James Elder for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm at the Liverpool Echo Arena today. Terry Flanagan taking on Derry Matthews. Also on the undercard, former world champion Paul Butler. Just witness him in action. Impressive ninth round stoppage win for yourself, Paul. Yeah. How wasn't... you feel, mate? Not too bad. Um, not impressed with the performance, really. Just basically on his behalf because of how negative he was. But we got the win in the end. We got the stoppage. Um, so, all in all, happy days. We spoke about this before. Sanchez is a bit of an unknown quantity. There wasn't much of him on the internet. His record suggests that he punches, but you don't quite know the level of opposition he's been in with. Is that a worry for yourself coming into this sort of fight where you've not got that sort of measuring stick, if you like? I wouldn't say it's a worry. It's just um, something you've just got to be careful of. Um, we didn't know much about Teddy. Uh, every, every, everyone I seem to get in with that I don't know nothing about is always a puncher. <laughs> Um, it happened with a Commonwealth champion. Um, it just happened again. He obviously had nine knockouts out of his eleven wins or twelve wins. Um, so he could punch a little bit. Uh, I think that's all he came over to do as well. Just try and knock me out. He didn't come over to try and outbox me and win it on points. He just tried to make me fall short and, and then lunged in with two big shots, um, which I could see him trying to do, which made it so so hard and negative for me because as I was pressing. He was just stepping back and I was falling out of range a few times, but we got there in the end. And it added the WBO Intercontinental title to your Hall of Belts. You yeah. must have one of the most impressive collection of belts in the division. Yeah, that's my eighth title that now um, in 22 fights, so I'm picking up some belts. Um, hopefully we'll just pick up another, another world title along the line as well, because they're, the they're the main ones, they're the important ones, that's what everyone wants to win. Um, these intercontinentals, internationals, they get you in line for them, so you pick them up as you go along. How far do you think you are from attaining these big fights? How, how close are you to these big fights, in your opinion? Um, we're not too far away. We've got a, I spoke to Frank yesterday, we've got a final eliminator, or possibly for the world title, um, and that could lead on to big things. So I win the world title, um, obviously stuff's been spoke about with Cali Fi. Um, he goes on and he can win a world title. We can both unify the division. There's no point in, in boxing for, for pennies when we can both make some some real big pocket money out of unif unifying a division. Agree, you've only got to look at the likes of sort of Quig Frampton, the, yeah. the Frotch Groves thing, to see that some of the That's biggest it. money spending fights domestic are the, them domestic clashes. They are the big clashes and if you want to call them rivalries. Um I've had no problem with him. It's always him that seems to call his mouth. Uh, but listen, it's one of them, it's a sport, it's boxing, everyone wants to be number one. Right. I want to stay number one, he wants to take the number one, he wants to win a world title, I want a world title, and then I'm sure we both want to unify as well. Jamie Conlon was here today, we have spoke about this fight so much, I'm getting blue to, in the face of talking about it. Is it going to happen? What's your thoughts on it? James, your guess is as good as mine, we want it, they talk about it. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, we've, we've wanted it since... They first mentioned it. I remember him winning the um, WBO European title, and he said, "Paul Butler's got the British there. Um, why can't we make that?" Ever since then, we've always asked for it. Um, they've just talked about it. We want it. Let's get it on. There's a final eliminator there. Take it. As you know, sometimes the case may be no fault to the fighter. Jamie Conlon himself, while the fight hasn't happened, sometimes it just these things don't happen. Yeah. Is there a chance that you could miss that window for that fight? In your opinion? Maybe, yeah. Um, I think, I think he wants me to do the hard work. I think he wants me to go out and win a world title and give him a voluntary or, or he'll push into a mandatory position because he's quite high up there as well mm. in the WBO. And I'm sure he'll push up again now because Tete's moved up in weight, so he takes a spot there as well. So he's not too far away from one himself. How thankful were you and the rest of the division to see that freak Tete move up in weight? Um, yeah. Very thankful. He's, he's a special talent. Um, the, the fact, I think the fact he could, agree. sorry to interrupt you, yeah. he could basically win world titles at three weights. I'm telling you, he's, he's a he's a freak of nature. He's he's a special talent, and he'll win he'll win world titles at multiple weights. He wouldn't look small at featherweight. He would not look small at all. If he goes up to super bantam, he's as big as he's as big as them at super bantam when he gets in the ring on the night. He doesn't look that big on the scales. When I boxed him, when I got on the scales with him, we went head to head. I thought, does does why is everyone talking about this monster like? Mm. There's, there's not much about him. He got in the ring and I remember taking his gown off and I thought, 
The back. Whoa. His back. I remember yeah, his back. That's what I looked at first, his back, and I thought, yeah. how much weight has he put on? He only allowed £10 pound with the IBF the next the next morning. Mm. He put on £22 pounds since he got in the ring. He was a monster. It was incredible. Mm. But talk of him going up to super bantamweight to yep. fight Guillermo Rigondeau, that yeah. sort of shows you the level of, of where he's at, doesn't it? Yeah, um, he's a talent. He's, and him and Rigondeau would be some fight, it'd be a chess match. Mm. Uh, it wouldn't be one for your uh, your boxing fan in the pub. It's for your die-hard boxing fans that, that, that know the boxing, but it'd be some fight that. I'd love to see that. What's next for you? When can we anticipate seeing you out in action? Is there anything penciled in as of yet? Um, no, we just know we've got a final eliminator or possibly a world title. So hopefully the end of May, start of June maybe. We'll be looking around then. All right, well, listen, I appreciate you giving me some time. This is the second interview because we've done this interview already. <laughs> and and some, oh, I basically fucked it up. So yeah. here we are. Sorry for swearing. Yeah. Paul, I'll catch you in a little bit. Thank you for giving me some of your time, sir. I do Cheers, appreciate James. it. Thanks for